You've been charged for staying dedicated to the grind. You have the right to remain silent and keep the hustle to yourself or help others State with the your game. name for the record. Uh, Tommy Bzz, Three Page Tommy. How do you come up with that name? Uh, Tommy Bzz is just a name that I got from always uh, from our company. Bzz. And then Three Page Tommy is another name that was given to me from George Perez uh, Stories podcast. Uh, it's a, uh, George Perez is a comedian and he has a podcast. That's how I kind of started getting into getting more known more uh my name out there more so they gave me this name three plate tommy because i was telling a funny story on their podcast and it just stuck uh all you know everyone everyone that knows me now knows me as three plates okay three plates now let's take us back who was three plates in high school man three uh i, I grew up in a small town uh ridgecrest a little little place in the mojave desert a tiny little town with like about 200 students all together in the school uh just always being a little stoner kid and smoking and the funny guy just always uh i don't know just just uh making it where you can you're living in a small town they ain't shit to do but you got to make your own fun or your own way unless you want to end up you know all bad because a lot it, it could end up all bad out there there's so, no choices so since you was a stoner kid in high school man did you see yourself Fucking with marijuana down in the long run since it just came legal. Yeah, was you gonna no. be a drug dealer or underground? Yeah, no, or no. Before, no. Nah, before it was just mostly just say, chasing sacks, trying to get some weed, the nickel sacks or whatever back then. And uh, but never thought that I would be in the in the weed industry or, or anything like that. It was just mostly I just just smoked and and you know hung out with friends that smoked, you know. And so, so how did you stumble across this business, uh, this opportunity to start your own business? Uh, well, I I started uh, linking with different people out here, and I seen a couple of my buddies uh, were starting some companies, or actually started some companies like that, and I, it just caught my eye, caught my attention. I said, you know, all this movement, a lot of the, I went to these events, and these people have a lot of good weed and then some really bad weed. So I was like, man, let me let me try this out. I mean, we always been known for having good weed, like. Every time, whenever we go anywhere, everyone's like, man, you know, Tommy got that good all the time. And I was like, let me hook up everybody with this bombness, you know? And it just just sparked, you know, a little flame and just now it's what it is. Now, how did you come up with your brand name? Uh, I used to work at a tattoo shop. I used to be an apprentice in a tattoo shop. And um, we, I used to, like an apprentice, what you do is clean up for the tattoo artist, set up for them, uh, you know, do everything so all they have to do is pretty much sit down, uh, put the tattoo on, and, and that's it. So uh, I would, in the middle of cleaning up, they would, be, they would be tattooing, and I would be like, hey, what's up? Let's blaze it. So they would take a break and, and go outside, and we would smoke. We would blaze it. So the, the owner, he was like, hey, you guys can't be taking fucking breaks and going and fucking smoking, you know? He's like, you got uh, you to come up with another word or something. And that's when this came up, like, hey, bzz. And then w when I would be cleaning, I would just go up next to him and I'd be like, Bzz. and like, you know, five minutes later, they'd be like, oh, it's break time, you know, and we'd go out and smoke more down low. And everyone knew. Bzz, bzz, bzz. So I started uh, making a uh, clothes with it, like started drawing, doing art and making artwork and uh, made shirts. And it, that was the slow beginning of, bzz. but it's it's a short term for blaze it. Nice, man. Nice. And so as what's your biggest challenge you came across so far? Um, biggest challenge is getting my name out there. And the biggest challenge is just getting, being able to do what we do. Like with the licensing, there's so much that you have to go around, like so much to do that comes with being able to be a successful company. And it, it's just the only, the only thing that, you know, that is the hard part about it is just getting, Legit. Legit, okay. Yeah. So talk to us about the um, pre-roll backwoods you have. Yeah, so our pre-roll backwoods, it's uh, two grams of exotic flower, either OG, um, you know, different, different, nothing but the top flight, everything top. So we have two grams, and we roll it into a honey backwood, a Russian cream backwood, anything, you know, we don't use no saliva, just pure bomb, no uh, keef, no wax, nothing, because... 
We just want to bring that bomb to people. Everyone tries to cover it up with with uh, Keith and stuff like that, but that's just a cover up. If you have good, if if you're a real smoker of backwoods, you don't want to fuck around with no Keith or nothing. You just want that that pure bomb, and that's what we try to bring because there's so much different people doing the same thing that we let me bring something different. Let me bring some actual bomb, something where people like it because not how it looks or but how it is, how it tastes, the the quality of it. Now, do y'all pre-roll it yourself, or you got a um, distribution company? Or what? Yeah, no, it's a, it's all hand rolled. So I have, I we have rollers, and every every but each and every blend of ours is hand rolled. No machines. We break up the weed ourselves. Everything. There's no stems in our stuff. Like there's these companies that go and check what's in your blunt, and uh, a lot of people are like, "Oh shit, I hope my shit doesn't make it on there." Like I want mine to get on there. You know, yeah, like I want. Yeah, I want people to be like, "Damn, they do have the fire right here. They do have, you know, uh, this shit is good." So that you know, we we uh, go by just trying to have that fire. Now, that, do you do you allow your rollers to roll while high? Uh, well, I think a lot of them just be they'll they'll be high, like. Uh, but yeah, I just I just give them the stuff and and I tell them this you know this is how much we want back and and they they just roll them up. But yeah, I'm sure everyone gets high and I tell them you know what well, go ahead or you can smoke some. I mean shit, we all smoke. So if I'm gonna be rolling, I'm gonna at least if I'm gonna be rolling a grip of months, I'm gonna want to smoke one or two of them. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it, you know. So any kind of feature other products you have in your company? Yeah, we actually uh, we're coming out this year. We're gonna start a CBD product, a CBD. So uh, we're gonna come out with uh, CBD bombs, CBD uh, rubs for like pain rubs, pain patches, tinctures like the oils and sprays for your mouth for just to feel better. So we're doing the CBD lines, but what we do have is we have our our pre roll blunts. Uh, our pre-roll backwards. We have our edibles, like sour edibles, and we also have Mexican candy edibles, which is, you know, like we never really seen anybody doing Mexican candy edibles, yeah. and we always want to bring something different to the table because everyone's doing the same thing. Like everybody has blunts, everybody has edibles. Exactly. So I said, you know what? I've never seen Mexican candy edibles, and that's what I fuck with. Like that's what I fuck with. That's what pretty much a lot of people out here. They all love Mexican candy. Let me get fuck with some tamarindo, you know. So I just said, hey, let's fucking infuse this and let the people taste some bomb Mexican candy. Even if you don't fuck with Mexican candy, you might want to or get started because oh, what well, it has weed in it. So try a new thing. yeah, just some new, some new because there's so much out there. It's there's everything out there already. Now, so. how do somebody go about buying your products, man? I, uh, I know you can't ship it in the mail. So. Yeah, no, we have uh, sessions. We have different sessions in, in like, Orange County and IE and, uh, like, Ventura County. We have, uh, there's, like, these sessions, pop-up sessions where different vendors from all over go and they vend at these locations with uh, their the company and their products. So we go to, there's different ones, and you can catch us at, uh, Heavenly Minds OC in Orange County, there's a shop, and we're opening up shops in L.A., three new ones, where we're going to have all our products. And uh, I'm hoping uh, the end of February will already be established into the shops. That way we can let everyone know where they can, where we're located and where they can find our stuff. Now, do you think somewhere down the line, marijuana be able to mail across the mail? Shipping? I, I think... If it does get mailed, it'll have to be like straight from the manufacturer, I think. So it would be like if you're getting uh, a shipment of tobacco or something like that, you would have to go to the person. But like to be able to just like, oh, let me ship you this, like a product of like if you sell shirts or something like that, I don't, I don't think so. Just because just how it is. Yeah, so do you got a farm? Some. No, we have, a, we have a one location. It's not a, like a big farm. It's a... It's actually like a like a five hundred five thousand square feet um, location, and uh, that's where we have two of our strains, which is our our strains from BZZT is our wedding cake strain, and then our OG. This is a fire OG. So we have those two strains, and then all of our other product that's in our in our uh, in our products, we get it from different different farms that, you know, nothing but the top shelf. So what habits help you make you successful? Uh, just keeping at it, showing your face. Like, 
I try to be out there as much as possible. Like, if you just stay in one place and get used to being in that one place, and you're probably just going to stay in that one place. But if you try to get yourself in different places, like if you have an access to like artists, to music, to any any different types that, that you can get your name and brand out there to the locations that will that's what we try to do. Just something that I try to do is just be in people's faces, be in people's social medias, uh, different people's social media, so they're like they see that we're out, out there and active, and just show them the good product. Just show them show them something good. So, how many uh, people is you consider on your team? Um, our BZZT is small. It started off as just our family. Um, it's me, my my brother and sister, and then I have our rollers that or do our hand rolling. But our the business is just me, my and my brother and my sister that help me out to do everything. Uh, my sister takes care of all the accounting and and all the the edible side. I and I take care of all the marketing, getting it out there, getting it into people's hands. Now, what separates you from your competitors? Um, always having good product. We always try to never change our our formula of our blunts. We always keep it with the bomb, even if we're with the higher sales that it gets a little bit more expensive. We still have nothing but fire inside just because everyone's doing it. So we want to have that bomb. We try to always have the top quality flour, top quality candies. If it don't slap, we ain't messing with it. You know, if uh, if it don't hit, then it can't. If it don't have that smell, like I just want when somebody sees me, like whenever somebody sees me or our logo, they'll be like, that. That's you want some bomb? Go with him. Like whenever someone sees me, I want to be known as the guy with that bomb. Now every brand say they got their bomb. Yeah. Who's the judge of it is saying you got the bomb, man? I think um, uh, with just the people that fuck with you, like your your the people that have actually got our products by. There's people that talk stuff about our products, and there's people that I don't even know. They'll be like, no, hell no, that shit's fire. Like, you cannot say that that shit's not good. It's bomb. And I'm like, damn, that's cool that people actually back it up because it's like, that's that fire, you know? But what we try to say is, like, not to judge, but I think everyone that does fuck with our products, that smokes our, our products, everyone says, hey, that shit's bomb. Like, we've yeah, never yeah, I, I must admit, I had a pre-roll backwood. Yeah. Uh, woke up one morning, tried to take a couple puffs. And end up waking back up at two o'clock. Yeah, that's it, that's what it'll shit. do that too. You fucking, like, you hit yeah. it, and you'll be like, oh, I'm shit. About it. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah pretty thank good. you. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. No, it it does the job. So, what's your ultimate goal for the brand? Our ultimate goal is to uh, be nationwide, be able to help out people with our CBD products and our flour, so that people can enjoy some good flavor and actually have some good quality buds in their life. You know, we want to be hopefully in in all the dispensaries and you know by by 20 2022 to 23 and everywhere all over the US like where somebody's like I, I want to be accessible to someone in Florida and in, in Arkansas and Texas everywhere as long as it's legal there I want to be there I want now, people to have now how do a brand do that do you is it the conventions you go to or how do you get your brand worldwide uh, it's like branching out. It's either linking up with different people, showing your product to, on different different stands, like how you know with you and different people that I'm able to to get um, our name out there. Having good quality product and having a good mar marketing strategy, something that is, people are are gonna see everywhere. Uh, just try to get your name out there as much as possible. And and it it all falls into place. People start building you up. People start asking for your products in different places. And okay, say somebody a dispensary in New York hits you up over Instagram. Yeah. Said they want your product in their store. Yeah. Now, do you have to drive or fly away to New York? No. You well, you can't ship it, right? Well, it would be shipped from the manufacturer. So okay. the people that distribute our products, that that label and package our products for for distribution, those people are the ones that are allowed to send oh, okay. the, the your product to the different locations. So what type of advice will you give somebody new to the game? Keep at it. Don't give up. It's hard. It's uh you know, it's a lot of ups and downs. There's some you take a lot of losses. There's a lot of wins. You you know, like in any business that you're trying to do, never give up. Just give it your full strength. And as long as you work hard for it and you set a goal and you see a goal and you work hard for it, you, you'll get there. Like 
any goal that you set, as long as you work hard, you can get there. Unless it's, it's impossible, but shit, everything, you know, you can make it happen. I had a, like, I used to watch these podcasts every day. Joe, Joey Diaz, uh, the Church of What's Happening Now, his podcast every day for years. And I would always be like, man, I want, I want him to smoke my weed. So I started this company, you know, uh, bzz, and I said, man, I want to get my stuff into his hands. And that was one of my first goals because he would tell goals. He would be like, write your goals down, work at them, and you'll get there. I wrote my goals down to meet these different podcast people, George Perez, Joe Rogan, Joey Diaz. And I met all of them, and they all smoked my product. They loved my product and put their product on their shows, which was an impossible, uh, like something impossible for me. It's like saying, no, I want to hang out with your favorite sports player. And I made it happen, you know. Yeah. What it is is just keeping at it, keeping at it, letting people know, trying to figure out a way to get to them, finding out, you know, and then and and you'll make it happen. I believe that too. Yeah. Are you currently looking for any sponsors? And if so, what kind of requirements should they have? Um, n n right now, uh, no no sponsors yet. Until we get a little bit bigger, I want to get at least a a good, nice chunk, and where people obviously see it as a good investment where instead of me having to talk about it, they just are interested in, in joining it, you know? So that's what I'm working hard for right now. But yeah, definitely in the future, hopefully get some sponsors and just go to the top, help out myself as long uh, as well as, as a sponsor, just build up from there. Oh, uh, so what do your parents think about this venture, man? Uh, um, when you first started it, it, it well, uh, at first it was kind of hard. Like my mom, uh, she always knew I smoked weed and stuff. And then when I when I used to work, at, I used to do sales. Like I used to uh, be a salesman doing sales and this just popped up in my head. Like, you know what? Let me fucking make this company. So she seen that it was actually something serious, something that I that she seen that drive in me that I really want to make this happen. And she was like, I back you up as, you know, as much as we can. And just don't don't make it a some like you know how just don't be a party don't be oh i'm just smoking weed and you know just make it a, a real company professional serious company if this is what you want to do so they my mom backs me up a hundred percent and uh so are you currently in a relationship yeah I have, so how do your spouse feel about it is she a smoker yeah no well i my my girl was a smoker but we're having we're having a baby now so she stopped smoking and it was hard for her to smoke but she backs me up 100 percent. she knows that it's busy i'm really busy a lot she understands that and um, i'm you know i'm glad to have her on my side she understands a lot of people don't understand they'll be fuck this you i don't ever see you you're always gone you're partying with different people she understands that and i'm lucky to to be able to not have a hard time from her now when you have your baby are you gonna smoke in the house or? No, well, we already started uh, like, like, cause I used to smoke in my house all day. <laughs> and then now it's just moving to the back. Now it's like, oh, when, even when my friends come over, they'll be like, fuck, let's go smoke. And I'll be like, let's go outside. They'll be like, fuck, it's cold. I'm like, well, fuck, I'm about to have the baby, you know? So yeah, it's changed a lot. Like everything is changing at the house because, you know, you gotta make changes when you have a baby. So, but it's all good. I'm gonna be outside smoking, enjoying the outside. And it's all good, you know, for a little bit. So what's the worst brand you ever smoked? Oh, I can't do that, man. Let me get my lawyer on that one. Grind face.